Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back, SimUK here. We are going to jump into Nautis Ship Simulator's uh, anchor courses. This is brand new, we haven't seen this yet. Uh, dropping the anchor is the first one, it's going to take 30 minutes. Now, um, it's going to require some mouse clicking to achieve this, because at the moment there are no keybinds capable of being bound to control the anchor and such. So you might not get to see me click on everything because sometimes um, the conning tower and whatnot is not available so apologies if that is the case but just know that I am doing everything properly um, in accordance with the way the game does these things so you'll still get to see everything that happens and how it happens and the anchoring element of the game is really really quite important so um, yeah lots of really good stuff coming up in this episode you are in a designated anchor area drop the anchor here in the correct way heading has to be correct move astern keep speed under 0 0.5 knots and anchor holding okay that's a lot more information than i was expecting so i'm going to have to learn a little bit here on the job i guess right so throttle is absolutely at zero we've got for the first time ever we've got port and um uh, sorry we've got we've got bow and aft thrusters and i've never had that before so i actually don't know what to do um i think what we're gonna we're, what we're going to have to do is jump into the online documentation so that i can see what i'm supposed to be doing which is a bit frustrating i wasn't expecting that give me two seconds whilst i sort that out Okay, so here we are. We've enrolled in the course, and I'll read through this, and we'll learn together, I guess, unless you already know how to do this. Uh, when a vessel needs to stay in one position for some time, and mooring is not an option, you can use the anchors. The anchors keep a ship from drifting away on the current or the wind. Also, when a ship's propulsion fails, the anchors can, in some situations, be the only way to stop a ship. Anchoring may seem easy, but many accidents happen during anchoring operations, resulting in lost anchors and chains, damage to the ships and injury to crew members. Although an anchor of a large ship is very heavy, the weight is not why it works. The anchor has a great holding capacity because it digs or hooks itself into the seabed, and as long as it's pulled horizontally, it will stay in place. So you see there... That's the anchor digging into the ground and then fully uh, dug into the ground whilst being pulled this way. It's got really good anchoring, hence the term anchor. More than the anchor itself, the anchor chain holds the ship. The part of the chain that is lying on the seabed restricts movement. If the forces of the ship exceed the holding power of the anchor plus chain, the anchor is called dragging which means the ship is not secured and will slowly move away from the desired position. Now, I've tested this and it works, so I'm really quite impressed with how well they've done here. The design of anchors has a long history. There are many different types of anchor with their own special applications. The classic anchor design is the stock admiralty of fisherman anchor, or fisherman anchor, seen on the right of the image below. So this is the fisherman anchor, this is the admiralty anchor. It is often depicted with the top beam, the stock, in the same orientation as the flukes, the pointy bits. But in reality, it is perpendicular, otherwise the anchor would not work. The shape makes it difficult to handle on board. I imagine it does, yeah. Most modern large vessels use stockless anchors on the left. The advantage is that they are easy to stow and provide a good hold on different types of seabed. The stockless anchor also has disadvantages. The anchor can get an uneven hold if one of the flukes is buried deeper than the other. This can cause the anchor to rotate on its side and lose hold. So these are the flukes. So these are supposed to dig into the ground 
And what they're basically saying is if one fluke digs in and the other one doesn't, it can be flipped over um, and thereby pulling this fluke out of the ground. Maybe it will then find a better grip, but uh, there's no guarantee of that, I suppose. Because anchors have been on ships for a long time, the terminology around anchoring is very old as well. This is the D-link, this is the shank, these sticky up bits are the fluke, the pivot is at the bottom, the shoulder is the bit that goes across, and this is the crown. And there's a 36 degree pivot capable uh, for the flukes. The anchor is connected to a cable, road or chain. In small yachts the road can be partially chain and the rest rope, but in larger ships it's a steel chain only. So this is called a swivel shackle, this is a common link and this is an end shackle. This is a detachable link, not sure what the difference is there. The amount of white links equals the amount of shackles. Okay. Interesting. The length of an anchor chain is often measured in shackles, not to be confused with a shackle. <laughs> that is very confusing, I'll have you know. The smallest part of a chain. This is a unit of length equal to 15 fathoms or 90 feet or 27.4 meters. A shackle is also referred to as a shot. Coloured links in the anchor chain indicate the number of shackles that have been paid out. I'm with you. So the first shackle, so if you've got one white shackle painted, that means you've reached one shackle. When you hit two shackles in length, two of the shackles are painted white. That's, that's kind of confusing. An anchor winch or windlass on deck is used to lower and raise the anchor. The anchor chain can be released or hoisted by the engine in the windlass. It also has a brake to reduce the speed of the chain or hold the chain. The brake is designed to also work without power so it can be used to drop the anchor in an emergency. The anchor chain is stored in the chain locker below the deck under the windlass. It goes to the deck through the spurling pipe. Spurling pipe. Wow, okay, so this is the bitter end, until the bitter end. Wow, look at that. I've just learned... Until the bitter end is a British saying. I don't know how well translated that is. But it means like, you know, literally right to the very end. And that's what that is. That's the bitter end. I'm kind of confused. So, okay, so the bitter end is where it's attached to the ship. That is so cool. Brilliant. Okay, anchor, anchor chain, horse pipe, guillotine, windless spurling pipe, chain locker. So the spurling pipe is what connects the chain to the deck, and that's the bitter end. How cool is that? This game is brilliant for teaching you stuff, it really is. The last bit of anchor chain that is connected to the ship is called the bitter end. This part of the anchor chain is usually not seen, only when things have gone very wrong. The bitter end can be disconnected from the ship in case of an emergency or maintenance. On the other side of the windlass, as we find the guillotine, which is used to fasten the anchor chain, it absorbs the forces on the chain when the anchor is set, so these forces are not transferred to the windlass, which is not designed to hold the weight of the ship. Okay. The chain continues down through the deck into the horse pipe and comes out at the bow where the anchor is attached to the chain. Some ships have recesses where the anchor sits flush with the hull. Others have protruding anchor seats that prevent the anchor from touching the bow when it is lowered. I've got an interesting story about one of the old tool ships uh, that was sailing around the Horn and the anchor, massive, huge 10 ton anchor was hanging off the side of the ship. And if, if you know um, anything about the horn, you know how aggressive it can get down there. So they were sailing this huge sh uh, ship, this huge tall ship, through the horn. And the waves were coming so hard and so high up the side of the ship, they actually lifted the anchor and chucked it onto the deck. 
and then the men god only knows i mean these guys are fearless okay this is back in the days when uh it was recommended that you climb up to the tallest tree or the tallest pylon or the tallest anything you could find and do handstands on it just to make sure that you're not scared of being that high up um, that's that's how brave these men were absolutely mental a lot of them but in a very very good way anyway they were they were ordered to get this 10 ton anchor back on the side of the ship I mean how on earth do you even go about doing that they had to theoretically use the weight of the ship when it tilted I don't, I don't know how they did it maybe it wasn't 10 tons maybe I'm exaggerating that bit two tons whatever it was it was a bloody great big anchor very heavy and they had to get it back over the side of the ship crazy stuff anyway I'll move on how to drop an anchor right the anchor is lowered with the windlass controlling the windlass is a skill that is beyond the scope of this course we will focus on the best practices without covering the exact operation of the brake clutch and windlass engine in Nautis home the anchor panel just has four options heave brake slack and release first right now this is how I think you do it and then I'll read how you're actually meant to do it okay it's my understanding that you set the um, the slack so you gauge the distance the depth let's say it's 10 meters uh, between the hull and or you're in 10 meters of water okay and the tide may go in or out which can raise you another say five meters you can either be five meters more shallow or five meters more deep so what you do is you put in five times the current depth of water that way you're covered if the tide goes uh, if the depth uh, increases or decreases you should still have enough length to be able to retain the anchor that's that's my understanding um, so you would set that you would set the slack that you want so 5 times 10 is 50 so you would set slack to 50 and then you would release and it would release 50 meters a chain and that's how in my head or my understanding how anchors work now I'm going to read how it's actually done and learn where, I, where I'm going wrong first you select the anchor you want to control on the left side of the panel with the slider on the right you can control the windlass you can heave and slack with one standard speed in the brake setting the anchor is chain is fixed yeah release means letting the anchor go and let gravity pull it down this could be used to lower the anchor quickly or in an emergency situation the speed of chain will then be controlled by the brake when you have reached a correct location to anchor you first need to make sure that your ship has the correct heading this heading is the same as after the anchor is set it depends on the direction of the wind and the current yep I thought as much secondly you want your ship <coughs> to surely slowly move astern if you move ahead whilst lowering the anchor the anchor chain can damage the hull of your ship if you move too slow the anchor chain will pile up on the anchor which can cause problems like fouling the anchor if you go too fast the forces will exceed the braking force of the windlass causing damage to the equipment the right astern speed depends on how fast you pay out the anchor chain for large ships the speed over ground of 0.3 knots astern is recommended at this speed the windlass will be able to pay out the anchor chain fast enough to keep up with the ship a typical windlass winch will have a speed of nine meters per minute the length of anchor you need to you need depends on the depth of the water type of seabed and weather conditions the scope of the chain is the ratio of depth of the water and the length of chain usually the chain is five to six times the water depth or as a rule of thumb the square root of depth is the approximate chain length in shackles when you have slacked enough chain you stop the chain with the guillotine if you have a very large ship you can stop the astern movement of the ship by giving the engine a short kick ahead okay if you did not pay out enough anchor chain or the wind or current becomes stronger during anchoring 
The chain may be lifted from the seabed and the anchor can start to drag if the holding force is not enough. So that's the catenary, that's no chain on the seabed, no horizontal pull, and that's the anchor. Right, scenario one. Start the following scenario in Nautis. How to complete the scenarios. Move astern slowly while lowering the, whilst lowering the anchor. Keep your speed below 0.5 knots. Keep the bow of your ship in the wind, heading of 60 to 90 degrees. When you've paid out enough anchor chain, the scenario will complete. Okay. Right. So we've we've moved a bit because of the current. No, excuse me, not the current, the wind. So I'm just going to turn. In fact, let's use the bow thruster. And just turn the front of the ship back into the wind. We're only slightly off, to be fair. Right, so we now appear to have a better autopilot. If you look at the autopilot at the bottom when it pops up, you can see that we've actually got degrees in there, so I think autopilot might actually work on this particular ship. Maybe it's just broken for some ships, who knows. Right, so we're coming round to 82 degrees. It said about 90, didn't it? said about 90 but actually the wind is now off to our port side which is not quite what we're after all right let's drop the ports we'll start slacking oh we've it's between 60 and 90 degrees and we've gone to 90. okay so it, it, i was right in that sense but i wasn't paying enough attention all right well slap on my wrist I've learnt from my mistake. Let's do it again and let's do it properly. So we keep the wind and or the current. I don't know how you, I don't know what you prioritise. So let's say uh, the current is coming from a western, westerly direction and the wind is coming from a northerly direction. Which do you prioritise? Do you go in between the two? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it will tell us later on. But okay, so between 60 and 90 degrees, so just keep the wind ahead of us, as it were. So let's drop some, start slacking the port. Oh, okay. You have to move slowly astern while lowering the anchor chain so it does not pile up. Keep the stern SOG above 0 0.2 knots. So again, we failed because you have to be moving first. Now, I, I, I would argue against that because the speed at which the anchor is going to come down under a controlled braking, it's quite slow. It's, it's not a fast thing. It's quite slow. So um, I would argue that you would start dropping the anchor before you start moving backwards. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's just my logical brain saying, well, hang on a minute. That's inefficient. All right, let's put 10 degrees of reverse thruster on so that we're heading backwards. Currently moving at 0 0.2 knots, so I can now drop the anchor. Hang on, what happened? I'm at 132 degrees. I wasn't facing into the wind. What an idiot. Well, you see, this is why I like simulators, because A, they punish you for getting stuff wrong, <laughs> and B, they teach you some important lessons. So head into the wind, then start backing up, then drop the anchor. Noted. Duly noted. Technically, if there's no current, which there isn't, and the wind is blowing, the wind will eventually sort of get us in a straight line anyway, wouldn't it? Or maybe not. Maybe it, maybe there's no guarantee of that. Right, okay. Bow thruster engaged. We will face ourselves into the wind. I will put 10 degrees of rear... on the 
go. There we are, eventually. See that we are coming around quite nicely. 38 degrees per minute, which is probably more than we want. So let's just ease off the bow thruster for a moment. Let's get an external cam so we can see just what's around us. So we've got lots and lots and lots of space to play with. Yeah, look at that huge area. Very good. <coughs> right, we are now coming around to where we want to be. So I'm going to use the bow thruster to control the front of the ship. And we are now moving backwards at 0 0.4 knots, which is more than I want actually. Let's try and get, ideally I want 5%, 7 will have to do. So we're reversing at 7%. I should now be in the right angle at the right speed. So we can now... Right. So this time... I'm being told off because I have to keep the astern SOG below one knot to avoid overheating the windlass. Okay, I think we were moving okay i'm with you so we it's this here um i don't know if you can see that can you see that on the yeah so it's this bit here we was we were still using the bat well we weren't using the bow thruster but the front of the ship was just moving too fast to one side um so yeah i think that's where we that's where we failed. Although it says a stern, which in my head means the aft of the ship, which was only at 0 0.9, which is under one knot. So I, I don't know. I, <coughs> correct me where I'm going wrong here, guys, because I'm clearly learning on the go. There's a lot more to uh, dropping an anchor than I realised already. Tough lessons to be learnt. I haven't got long actually. We're going to go meet the guys. Let's continue. Bow thruster on. Six degree, seven degree of reverse RPM. We'll take that. I'll tell you what, the thrusters on this ship are flipping effective. There must be huge bloody great things. Should we get uh, a nice view underwater so we can see what's going on here? Or not. There we go. Let's try and get the front of the ship. Can I get the front of the ship? Oh, that's so infuriating. Maybe if I zoom out a smidge. Right, that's 
going to have to do as a view. Oh crap. Just gave it loads of extra throttle by accident. Okay. Right, bow thrusters are now, we're at 80 degrees, so I've got to try and get this ship straightened out now. So very small amount of bow thruster, trying to keep the front of the ship as stable as possible. We're reversing at 0 0.5 knots. I think now we are finally ready to start lower. No, what have I got wrong now? Son of a bitch. You have to keep your astern SOG below one knots to avoid overheating the windlass. It is. It is below one knot. That's below one knot, that's below one knot, that's below one knot, that's below one knot, that's below one knot. I'm very confused right now. Yeah, I, I genuinely don't know... Uh, what I did wrong. Perhaps the bow thrusters have to be setra neutral. Don't really, can't really think what else I'm doing wrong there. This may be a complete failure, and I may have to go to the to the community and um, ask them to give me some guidance. I'm sorry, uh, sometimes a video doesn't have a conclusion to it. Um, we'll try one more time and I'll desperately try and do exactly what I'm being asked to do. It's a bow thruster. and get that external cam sorted out. Right, 
hopefully you'll be able to see everything. Maybe one more. That's too much, isn't it? That's not a bad camera angle. Right. Let's get back into the ship for a second, just so I can get this sorted out. So we're now at 69 degrees, I'm turning too fast. Just need to fix what I've cocked up. Somewhat distracted. For some reason we're going forwards. All right, let's give it six degrees of reverse. Six percent of reverse, rather. So I think 75 degrees is going to be spot on. Let's try and get the, the wind right on our nose. And then I'll attempt to uh, get everything below one knot. And then we'll, we'll try and do something. baby centralize right we are now officially centralized we are going backwards at 0.2 knots and moving very slightly to starboard at 0.2 knots nothing is over the speed limits that they set so it should work this time yes right, let's go to external camera so you can see this happening the anchor is dropping, we are dropping at speed, we are reversing maybe a little bit too fast. 0 0.3 knots is about as fast as we want to go, but hopefully the anchor will start slowing us down. Nice little sound effect. Success! The anchor is dropped correctly, well done. <laughs> I thought we were actually going to see it dig into the ground, but no, apparently not. It's not part of this scenario. Right, well that took a damn sight longer than I was expecting. But uh, in the next test, which is going to come in the next video, we shall test to see if the anchor holds. And then we'll heave the anchor, and then we'll do an alternative anchoring method uh, in a period of time. And yeah, lots of, lots of exams coming, I guess. That took a lot longer than I expected to do that one, but we've done it. And I've learnt a lot from doing it, so that's all good. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care. Goodbye for now.